practically fanga in any food is not good it is not appropriate it's not good but um i think it's important to uh, to say that there is so much fungi around i think sometimes in your, even in your refrigerator you you, you keep things uh, long enough you will get mold mold is another popular term for fungi for, for fungi mm -hmm. and uh, a particular type of fungi though uh, is, is really um, uh, associated with production of aflatoxin mm -hmm. and uh, this particular uh, fungi uh, tends to affect most foods actually that we store especially grain um, it is it is common in maize because in maize we see it uh, even with a visible eye when when maize are decaying or maize are going bad you see the dis discoloration in the maize cob sometimes even when it is in the field now um, I think fungi basically is everywhere is all over the place so it's a it's a it's an issue of how you um, grow your crop how you harvest your crop and how you store your crop so uh, because it is so much everywhere if you don't store your your grain properly um, you are almost certain fungi is gonna grow the public needs to understand that that there are conventions that we use for se food safety generally and in this case um, there is a measure of af aflatoxin that is inevitable it is expected to be because there is so much of it in any grain that you would harvest and keep that's why there are particular standards that you will find fra and other millers talking about moisture content in the grain before it is uh, harvested uh, before it is basically sold mm -hmm. uh, it has to be below a particular percentage seven percent is what they talk about uh, basically the big issue is this aflatoxin Meaning, if you are about 7% or more, the chances are that as you store it, and when the environmental conditions are, um, are, are, are right in terms of high temperature, it will grow. In aflatoxins, there are, there are categories of, of toxins that these fungi produce. There's a particular category we call B1 aflatoxin. There's a B type. B1 and B2, uh, B1 is, is really known to be most carcinogenic, as you, as, as you alluded to. Carcinogenic uh, to the lay public simply means if consumed over time um, uh, in, 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 in large quantities, it may cause damage to the liver, which damage as the liver tries to recover uh, may result in, in, in liver cancer. Now, the levels of these aflatoxins by convention are that there is a minimum that is tolerated worldwide okay it is excessive amounts of this and i think for our grain the convention we follow internationally in our region is up to about 10 a cutoff of 10. when you detect that um you 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 then want to figure out which type of aflatoxin is it of course when you get into the b b1 type it has even a stricter uh, threshold where you don't want it to be above five of that total aflatoxin mm -hmm. um so so it's very important to to explain first and foremost that um in humans when you take when, when you inadvertently consume contaminated uh, stuff with aflatoxin um, the concentration has to be huge for you to have what you call acute aflatoxin toxicity um, and and if you do get that it, it may manifest in any of the uh, uh, common ways like you may have nausea vomiting in extreme cases you may have a running tummy you may have uh, um, uh, even uh, disseminated uh, hemorrhage like you start to bleed uh, 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 in within your organs uh, when you consume uh, huge quantities now aflatoxin is caused by a mold or a type of fungi with the Latin name Aspergillus flavis. 
So the afla from the aspergillus and the flagellus is what called now afla toxin. Because as Prof has said, these fungi, they produce toxins. And those toxins, they are the ones, if they are now in large quantities, they are the ones which create problems to animals, humans inclusive. So uh, coming to what is the talk of the day now, is to say that, you see, I will echo Prof's words, that in this country we've got systems under which we work. And also I should echo to you to say that because of advancement in medicines and our understanding to say that, well, I think the ecosystem or the world is one. The pathogens which are troubling us are one, literally. That's how we've come up with what we call a one health system of approach to disease control, disease prevention. One health meaning that we are talking of what is in the environment, what is affecting animals, and ultimately what is affecting humans. I belong to a school of people who believe that veterinary medicine actually should be described as preventive human medicine because our thrust of work, what we do there, ultimately protects human lives. So coming to this, what is being discussed now, we started noticing that as I said, we've got a system under which we operate. There are networks of private practitioners, we've got the public practitioners, we've got schools like the University of Zambia. So basically, when our colleagues were doing clinical services, we came to notice a trend that we've got these manifestations in pets, especially dogs. Yeah? You've got dogs coming, the owners are complaining, well, this my dog is bleeding from the, the mouth and other openings, this is failing to eat, it's vomiting, it's weak. So there are a number of manifestations, or there are a number of diseases that can manifest in that way. So colleagues started examining, and then when you are diagnosing a problem, from clinical examination, some would bring the dogs already dead, then we do what we call post-mortem to see what, how, what, how, what damage has been caused inside. And in that, they are what pathologists call pathognomic signs. Those are specific to a certain disease manifestation. So now, what came up with that well? Cooked liver, there's some fluid in the stomach. And then he, this was being noticed across the veterinary service line. The private sector, these are reporting these, these are reporting that. And said, no, but he, why are we having this all of a sudden? Where does it lead to? Bleeding to us. What has been happening in the country in the past year or this year is associated with anthrax. And I think you heard that we had cases of anthrax from Sinazongwe. Then we said, does it mean that this has escaped us or what? But then when we went further into the diagnosis and the post mortem, that's when we came to realize that no, actually we'll be dealing with it, something different. What could this be? The tentative said no, this could be aflatoxins. We took samples to the University of Zambia, they did their tests there, they said yes, we found high levels of aflatoxin from the But then we said no, there has to be some confirmatory. Let's ask our colleagues. The University of Zambia sent samples to South Africa. In the meantime, now we said, but where is this pattern leading us to? And the, in interviewing the owners of the pet owners, that's where now we came to know there is this type of dog food where all of them who are, who are saying that there is this problem, that is what they've been feeding the dogs on. Then we made a follow up. Let's trace back what food is that? And that's what brought us to farm feed. No. You didn't have to take a media outlet to break this news before action swung in by ZN and PHI. Did it have to take uh, that to happen? And obviously, in the course, sent a lot of panic. But the news had to be broken. In fact, we made to understand that this warnings or signs were given in about, I think, in June or somewhere there. Mm -hmm. Did it have to take this long? It took, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was Diamond TV that broke the news and all of a sudden there's all this panic. Could you have given this 
a lot earlier? Uh, Franklin, I would say that it didn't take the media to break the news for us to act. We acted way before the media got the news. In the background? Yes. But not publicly? We acted way before the... Look, here is the situation. You've got something which transcends. As I said, that we work from the One Health concept. That's what we are doing as Zambia. So when we got the information that there is this manifestation in dogs, it was brought to us. So nobody in dogs, what is the problem? And we tracked this, we took it to the source. We found the source. We called, we engaged the stakeholders who were involved in that, who were producing that feed. And they, they also told us, well, I think we've also noticed this, so we are initiating a recall. Because we went there with a letter to say that our findings are that your feed is contaminated and we've got mortalities. So now, as I said, look, we had to get confirmation from our colleagues out there to say that, well, there is this problem which we found. Can we have another laboratory confirmation which they brought to us? Me meanwhile, people are consuming 400 dogs <laughs> die. Um, one would expect a faster uh, frankly, I think public I, response. I, I will correct that. It was from our findings, not 400. It is 99, to be specific. So, we put so what's been going out there is, is wrong. And no, it was not 400. It's 99. We had 61 dogs reported dead in Osaka and 38 in Livingstone. Mm -hmm. Yes. So right. That is what we have as it currently. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yes. Having said that, um, the system that you talk about um, at this point, uh, Maybe something slipped. Well, um, Franklin, I, I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, look, the moment um, what he's calling one health system of, that, that we are using for, 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 for really animal, human, and environmental health uh, uh, kicked in, our colleagues from the vet brought, we have experts from human health, animal health, environment and meetings have been going on. Now, you don't, you don't jump because 30 dogs have died suddenly. You don't jump. Because if you do, the consequences of your jumping can, you might be wrong. And if you are wrong and you alarm the whole nation, the consequences will be great. Look, you are talking about enterprises here that have been in existence with millions of dollars invested and these are enterprises that have partnered with government to provide a, a service. So we've got to be responsible. We cannot, we cannot jump that way. We've got to be absolutely sure. And, and I think that um, um, could we have moved faster? Maybe that's the argument. But I don't think there's any element of recklessness. We actually feel that this is something that was totally new to ourselves. This is something that we have systematically investigated, concluded, and agreed with all these stakeholders, and they've been incredibly cooperative. Remember, the moment uh, reports were taken to uh, particular millers, they began the, the effort of uh, withdrawing products associated to that batch. It's not as straightforward as, oh, a dog has died here, can you stop producing, can you tell the public? It is way more responsible than that. And I think that um, Zambians need to be proud and Zambians need to trust the system that uh, in this particular instance, I think we've done very well. Now, in the process, the kicks in the um, issue of confidence and, and, and trust in products and brands uh, that, you know, have been named and, uh, and, and, and the need uh, for them to come out and assure the public that everything has been uh, sorted out. What's, what's the plan? So, so um, I think that to say everything has been sorted out would be erroneous. I think that the, the, we, we, we have labored to establish that the, pro the issue of mold, aflatoxin, is a very 
a big problem because it is here with us. And in fact, I, I mean, this is not even something new because traditionally we know um, from the east where you hail from, you know that groundnuts are also very prone to, to mold. And when, the, when it affects that, and, and, and it, you, know, you know, people have historical and traditional ways of identifying it and separating the bad seed. So it is not a, a, a new, essentially a new problem. It is something that has been with us, but we've gotten to a level where because of this incident that happened, it triggered a, a, a response, which, by the way, Franklin, I, I run the Public Health Institute where we do our very best to map Every year, we try to map what are the anticipated public health threats. This was not among them. And yet, before we record a single human case, we've been able to come out in the public. Mm -hmm. We've only recorded cases in animals, and we've come out in the public, and you've seen action that has withdrawn commodities that is getting rid of any batch that is associated with the aflatoxin contamination is withdrawn and is being Well, the destroyed. argument is that you only see the signs in the future. I of mean, course. How else do you expect it to see? Right. So, <laughs> you, Tell me. so to assume that there's no human <laughs> issue it w would be erroneous, wouldn't it? I mean, it's, we're yet to see the results. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and this is the point that, that we know from a scientific perspective that um, aflatoxicosis affects animals, particularly dogs, very severely, and they die very quickly. While other animals like pigs, he will correct me if I'm wrong, they will withstand quite some amount of aflatoxin, much more so humans. There are other factors that we are now still reviewing and trying to understand. Um, if you are talking about uh, maize meal, for example, uh, we know that the act of uh, uh, consuming maize involves cooking. We don't eat it raw. And when you cook, some amount, a fair amount of aflatoxin actually gets uh, uh, destroyed from the heat. It doesn't get rid of all of it. But we also know that for aflatoxins to affect humans, they should have been consuming this over a fairly long period of time. Now, we cannot tell before the fact that oh, because the last two days you've consumed this millimeal, you are going to have liver damage. Unfortunately, right. we, we, we are not yet in that space. It will, it will, take a, it will it have to would, wait a little it bit. Will have it might be a bit time. different from animals, though. Mm -hmm. What would it be? Because they probably have less resistance. Um, you, uh, the, the food may not be as cooked and it's roller meal, we're told, or dog food as it were. Mm -hmm. So the dog owner or the pet owner mm -hmm. is going to be very worried. Mm -hmm. How do you address this problem? How do you assure, assure them? Yes, uh, Franklin, as I said, maybe to echo what Prof has just said here, is to say that the, I think the population, the country shouldn't panic. I will still repeat that we need, we've got systems in place, and these systems are there to enable us to detect pathogens, are there to enable us to detect threats at an early stage. As I said, we are working in a one health concept. So the systems which we have, as I've said, for now, we've observed that uh, this problem is in dogs. So what we do, we engage the dog, the, the manufacturer, so the look, there is this problem. Where has it come from? And we will, to echo you back, we even had a meeting with the farm feed people, they, we called them to the office, let us sit, here is a problem, you've been in production for more than 25 years, have you ever had time when you have this problem? No, this is the first time, but let's make a trace back, where could it have come from? Maybe you don't store your food very well, maybe there was a time when you bought the maize early when it still was still had the high moisture content and your storage is bad, could have led to this. So here is an issue of identifying what is the problem and that we have, unfortunately, despite your investment, we will have to recall this feed from circulation, which is what we did. Now, what do we assure our pet owners, all our animal owners, or everyone around, is to say that we have 
early detection systems and we will be there even now when you go in a shop you can go and shop right frankly you go and buy your tea bond there yeah you will buy just like that but where it has come from it is passed through the public health screening of the veterinary department we respected that animal before it is slaughtered we have inspected the meat and certified it fit for human consumption that is when it is gone on the shelf so at all these, what we call the HACIPs, the critical points of control, we do monitor to ensure that this is the, what, what goes into circulation is fit for consumption. So even in this case, the assurance we are giving our stakeholders is to say that we will continue. Now we have upped up the game because of these environmental challenges also because of the drought which the country is experiencing. Yeah. We've upped up the game on surveillance to ensure that what is fed to an animal or what is fed to a human being is safe for consumption. Right. It's said that because of the drought, plants go through stress, um, and this is a period in which uh, we find ourselves in. We're talking about a situation where people that can afford to discard and buy you know, what is right are fewer than those that will feast on what is available surely that poses a problem especially in areas where you know it's hard to, to get by yeah it does pose a problem yes and that is why i say that you see we are there by the way our patients don't talk if you've got a headache i'll ask franklin how is your you tell me i've got a headache here when i go to a cow it's only our language it's the language of a vet and the animal to know that i think at this stage the challenge which we might face is this and that is the importance of the one health component now say so that look at this time what could be the foreseen threats caused by the environment in which we are we understand yes food is scarce for both humans and for animals so you up our surveillance systems on our animals we've got a chain of command starting from the camp level there you've got our extension officers guys you'll be look out for this food poisoning look out for this certain pathogen will thrive the, like now we've got anthrax which you, it will it will manifest itself so what do we detect from there at an early stage if we see it in the animals we move in and treat to say that this is what we've discovered. So far, the report coming from countrywide has not said that, no, we've seen, they say, massive deaths in pigs. We've seen this problem in cattle. It's still, and they, even the dogs, it's just been restricted to the line of rail where dog food, farm feed has got those agents there. So to us, we feel that we are on firm ground. We will ensure that we protect our animals and ultimately the population. Right. We're live on the interview. Now is the time to get in that phone call and ask uh, my two guests on this uh, important matter, which needs to be uh, well understood. Uh, now, Professor, the need for um, enhancing and monitoring of, uh, of food, uh, you know, obviously to prevent you know, uh, a, a, a such calls for funding. And this, like you said earlier, was not part of the plan. What happens now? Well, um, thank you, Franklin. Uh, fortunately, I think in the, in the wisdom of, of the law um, was, was really creation of institutes like the Zambia National Public Health Institute, uh, which institute is really entrusted with the disease surveillance, you know, uh, pre emergency response and preparedness. So we do have mechanisms that tap into resources when uh, potential threats are identified and prepared for. Uh, so in this, in this particular case, we are really working now to an enhanced surveillance system. Obviously, the stakes are very high. 
uh, the threat to public health is of, of prime importance, but with the one health issue we are discussing here, threat to animals is also of prime importance. So we've got to tap into um, uh, uh, emergency resources uh, to enhance our surveillance. We've got to tap into those resources to really uh, support our coordination, support our sort of testing and logistics. Um, the key issue is to make sure that, because we know aflatoxin is such a, a vast problem, where it is, detect it early, separate the, if it is in the grain, separate the grain, okay? And, and when you detect it, and, and it, and this is really important for the public to know, it doesn't mean everything else is, is bad. When you detect it to the extent you can isolate that batch, then you are taking important uh, affirmative actions. And this is what, this is the phase in.